What up boys and welcome back to another video. So as always when we're doing the 100 runs uh, I'm going to show you guys how I do the farm why you should or shouldn't do it And then I'm going to show you guys the results from doing the farm 100 times So in today's video we've got a dungeon that I've done uh, many times RFK And when we first started doing RFK it was absolutely insane because like RFK wasn't like a well-known uh, farming place. There was very few people who farmed it. So we just added it to our list of farms for some variety because RFK has a, a decent loot table in terms of like uh, world drop green items. World drop blue items, not that good, but it does have like uh, items that are specific to the dungeon, like specific zone drops, uh, blue items from RFK. So it didn't meet all the criteria to go and actually do the farm, like on paper it was good. And in reality it was really good too. Uh, now though, however, because the items weren't like super high in demand, but they were still selling because you didn't have that much competition on them. But now that I did add my list to, uh, I mean the farm to the... Uh, recommended dungeons for filling up your auction house and I've been doing it live on stream for years and so on There's obviously been a lot of people doing the farm too and it has, has crushed the value on almost every single item and especially now where the economy is not good like in the first place, place to begin with like with any farms because all the prices are so damn low everyone is trying to get the long boy and speaking of long boy Guys, this is a secret message in the video. If you guys use the code RFK, you're going to get 25% off on the 0 to 10 million gold guide. Only the first five people though. And back to the video. Uh, yeah, so prices are a bit low, disappointingly low because I used to love the dungeon. It was like when you did 100 runs, you had so many items worth keeping. That you could actually put it up on the auction house, uh, but now lately it's a vendor. A lot of items that I used to keep and put up on the auction house, the value is so low that I just vendor it. So I'm going to show you guys what I kept after doing uh, 100 runs. And then once you kill this bat guy right here, and you move over to these uh, froggy boys, like this frog boss. He drops a blue item like 100% if he doesn't drop the battle pet. So you could sell like these blue items for a lot of gold. Like, so you would like get guaranteed blue items that would sell for an okay amount of gold. But right now, most of them are just garbage. So killing off the last boss and then as always, use Dreamwalk to uh, get into the Dream Grove. And then use Dreamwalk again to get back outside the dungeon. And that is how I do the run. So if you're wondering like why I didn't loot, it's because, uh, well, it's what I always do. I don't want to mess up the loot, so I just want to show you guys how I run it. And if I loot, I'm going to get loot from 101 runs and not 100. And it triggers a lot of people, which I think is kind of fun. So uh, that's also another reason why I don't loot when I show you guys the run. But after doing this for 100 runs, this is what I'm left with. So looking at the green items, none of these are like really insane. The market value on them is good. This is probably the best blue item that I have, this watcher chest. These chests, like the Ember Silk and the Rain Collar, and even the Resilient, like, these sell, they really do. But, like, it, it's nothing to brag about, like, in terms of green items. I would have, like, four times as many uh, blue items uh, back in Legion, for instance. Blue items, we have the Black Knight, which drops off the frog. It's, like, the sell rate is decent on it, they tend to sell fast, but right now only 158 gold. I got none in the auction house, though, because I've already sold all of them. And then the Vendetta... 13k market value, <laughs> right above a thousand gold in my realm. Slag hammer, same story, same story with the, the double link tunic, which is a world drop. Then we got the uh, the pugilist bracers. I mean, look at the price of my realm, garbage. Wolf claw gloves, same. The ring, people buy rings by the way. Make sure you put them up on the auction house. So all in combined, like using my TSM macro, we're only looking at 67,000 gold. Now, that would result in like 6.7k gold an hour, which is absolutely garbage. Most of the five-man farms that I do generate more raw gold an hour. Uh, and then you also get like other items as well. But like, it only takes you like 20 minutes to do um, 10 runs of RFK. So uh, instead of 10 hours of actual playtime, it only takes like right above three hours to do 100 runs, but still, it is super low value. 
So RFK is a farm that used to be high on my list, but now it's definitely way down there. Like I've done a bunch of uh, dungeons so far in the 100 run series and uh, RFK is... Is it the worst one? Yeah. Like I've done these farms a million times, but out of like BRD, Sulfarak, Blackrock Stronghold, Ultiman, SM, RFD, BFD, the STV farms, LBRS, WAD, random WAD farms, Monotombs, even Shadowfang Keep, Sunken Temple, like RFK has done the worst. It's RNG, I'm fully aware of that. Like I've done RFD where I've only made like 80,000 gold after 100 runs and I've done it with over a million gold in market value. So it's definitely uh, definitely RNG, but so far it is the worst, uh, the worst run so far this time around but yeah that was it for the video so hopefully you guys still like the videos in this series if you do let me know in the comment section and thanks for watching i will see all of you guys back in tomorrow's video until then bye bye